Hey y'all, Mike Peace. Welcome to my shop. I've been wanting to turn a footed box for a long time, so follow me on this, this adventure. It pays to have, start with some type of plan, so make you out some type of sketch, and if it's a box, uh, make sure you have a clear understanding of the sequence that you're going to be doing. Now I'm starting with a rounded square. It's got a tenon on both ends. Uh, this is a piece of ambrosia maple. It's about four inches in diameter, uh, at least an inch longer than that to allow for uh, chucking and jam chuck. And I'm marking where the uh, bottom of the lid is going to be. Then I'm going to go ahead and start parting down a little bit just as I've got a feel for it. Uh, it'll need to be true up, trued up later. You can tell it's not running true. So I'm using a 1 8 inch parting tool just to initially mark the uh, where the bottom of the lid is going to be. And then I come back with a spindle roughing gouge and go ahead and true up the entire cylinder. Now I take my uh, eight millimeter beading and parting tool and go ahead and widen that area that's going to be be the tenon and and also leave room for parting off so I take a couple of passes and I'm just kind of marking this right now I'm not parting it off just yet then I start uh, shaping the lid so I have a little better feel for what the look of this thing is going to be before I start uh, advancing any any further so I'm rounding off the lid I'm marking a little bead with a, a point tool so we're just just tucking that bead over a little bit and then come out a little bit more under that bead Now I'm going to part off the lid. A thin parting tool would be ideal, except it's too short. I don't have enough leverage for anything more than about two inches. So I'm using my 1 8 inch uh, parting tool that's got a uh, much longer handle and it's a little bit thicker, so it's a little bit stronger for something this size. So I go ahead and just start parting down. And then I just fishtail uh, back and forth a little bit, give myself a little clearance room. Twist that off. Then I'll have to do a little bit more. Just smooth it. Okay. I remove the box bottom and replace it with the lid for hollow. All right, so I've taken some calipers and figured out how big this tenon's going to be. I'm going to make my initial hole here just a little bit smaller uh, where that's going to be. And it looks like it's going to be just inside of that. And make that initial cut. Now I can start hollowing it with a spindle gouge straight in the middle and then slice that grain sometimes I use a whole uh, a depth gauge now I'll adjust the fit a little bit Feel for it. I switched to a box scraper to make the walls parallel, uh, a, a straight in flange, a little bit deeper than the tenon on the base is going to be, and uh, just refine it. Takes a few tries to get it right. Then I'm going to clean off the face and just chamfer it inward just a little bit using my skew as an egg to break scraper. You need to finish the inside of the lid before you take it off, so I've uh, sanded it, uh, used uh, abrasive paste and did a little texturing, so I'm going to move the, uh, put the base back on, 
And we're gonna use the base as a jam chuck to finish the outside of the lid. First thing we're gonna have to do is refine the tenon a bit. So I turn on the, lid, uh, the lathe, make sure it's running true, which it is. And now I just need to make a, a really snug fit on this tenon to refine the lid. So I'm gonna use a skew to just kind of refine that tenon. Just, when we'll do the final fit later. I just want a really snug fit. Looks like just a little bit. So I bring up tailstock support and start refining the shape of the, the lid uh, using my 3 8 inch spindle gouge, which is my workhorse tool for this. I'm not turned yet. I probably should have turned the knob first. Let's match up the grain here the best I can. Yep. That's going to be the top. All right. So, let's just take, take some of that wood down to what's going to be the top, and then I'll be able to know exactly where the lid's going to be. Lid handle, rather. going to be right there. Don't check that. Yep, right there where that pencil mark is. Let's go ahead and make that pencil mark a little more prominent. Okay, I've got a little more margin there to take this down. So I reduce the waste wood at the, the top, and then I'm going to turn that little a bit at the very end into a bit of a bead that I'm going to put a handle on. And it actually serves two purposes. It, uh, the main purpose is it allows me to have a little more room to drill. So I make a, a, this tiny bead, and then I reduce some of the excess waste and take it off. Then I go ahead and drill 3 8 inch to hold the knob. Flat. All right, now we're going to make it a little bit wider than this. Yeah, it's really just to measure the drill bed. Okay. All right, now, slowly, I'm turning this. Okay, now let's turn a spear. Probably wouldn't hurt if I draw a center line by eye. Alright, so I bring this over. I left it on my chuck because every time I take it off, it's going to change the axis. <coughs> and I can see it doesn't quite line up, so <coughs> I need to reduce this about a sixteenth of an inch. And then I think the knob is a, at the, that size is a little too big, so I think I'm going to take it down to something small. My issue is I never tied up my chuck, <laughs> so let's we'll do that this time. And we'll be able to just get rid of that little bud shaped tip on the very end. Okay, 
Okay, I sand up to 500, and then I use some abrasive paste that I made just to polish it. Okay, so the bead fits in nicely. I'm going to hold off the gluing until a little bit later. I need to sand this and, and we'll probably finish it, so I'll do this at the very, very end. Where the wood is stepped down is going to be uh, waste wood, and where that line is is the inside of the box, so it gives me some idea of, of how long the feet can be, or that can make them longer. And I start shaping the bottom of the box with a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. And then I realized I'd be better off with this nice smooth cut with a spindle roughing gouge because I can get a flatter cut with fewer ripples, which makes sanding a little bit easier. Always a good thing. I use a drill bit to drill out a little bit out of the center. I use a half, a half inch spindle gap for the initial hollowing. And just snipped it back so it can I can get it in here. And we'll just see how that goes. to the sides. Get it in there. from here and then it gets steeper and steeper kind of mimicking what the, out, the inside looks like this gauge that I did earlier and we can use them and make them exactly six degrees apart so the, to the inside base time to find out if that little bead is going to hold it without marring it up too bad. This is pretty soft wood, this uh, ambrosia maple, silver red maple. It's not like hard maple, it's very soft, so if you're not careful. And, and I think I had this size pretty close. Pretty close. It's going to dig in a little bit, but not too badly, I don't think. So that is going to hold it.
All right, time to do a little power carving. Okay, it's time to remove his nub at the bottom. I'm going to come straight in, small little bits at a time. I'm going to go back to that uh, half inch skew and just use that to kind of profile it. See how it goes. This end grain will be tough to sand. I realize there's something off about the shape that the between the legs needs to be arched. So I go back and do some more carving, and here's the final look. If you like this project, you may be interested in the projects I've got on uh, three-legged bowls. If you're interested in hands-on wood turning instruction near Sewanee, Georgia, visit my website for details. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.